probably not. Probably not. I would suggest having a separate sheet of paper for this. You're probably not going to have room to fit everything in it. Good morning. Thank you. One right here. Um, it says on a certain work day, the rate in tons per hour. So when you see rate, you should think derivative. If you want to write that on your paper um, or whatnot, that should be an automatic connection for you. Uh, when you see rate, you should think derivative. Okay. Um, the rate at, in tons per hour and units are important so you may want to underline stuff like that because they do lots of times let me see uh, yeah you get a point for not only your interpretation but it says with units so if you leave the units off you lose that point <laughs> yeah it's harsh but that's how they do it um, so if there especially with these problems most of the time you need to include units um, just glancing at Part of number three, they give you a point just for putting your units on there, okay? So, I mean, those are easy things that you can earn or easy things that you can lose um, if you leave them off. So, be, be uh, aware of units. Okay, so the rate at which unprocessed gravel arrives at a gravel processing plant is modeled by this function. <clears throat> where T is measured in hours between 0 and 8. That's usually pretty important. So we're just talking about the first 8 hours here. At the beginning of the workday, that's when T equals 0, the plant has 500 tons of unprocessed gravel. That is an initial amount or an initial condition. You're usually going to use that somewhere in the problem. So if you want to circle it, make a note of it, these are things you need to start being aware of. During the hours of operation from zero to eight, the plant process, processes gravel at a constant rate of 100 tons per hour. So here's another uh, rate. This is another derivative, um, but this is the rate at which it processes. The first one was the rate at which it arrived. Okay, so we've got two different rates going on here. We're adding and we're processing. So there, there's going to be two different things going on here. First of all, they ask us to find G prime of five, and they say using correct units, interpret your answer in the context of the problem. Now, guess what? This is calculator active. So there is absolutely no reason for you to try and take the derivative of that. Not that it's a difficult derivative, but why risk messing something up in your calculations when you can take your calculator, you can go to F3 and use the first function, differentiate, type in that function 90 plus 45 cosine of x squared over 18 comma x close your parentheses um, you can take the derivative of it uh, now it will not automatically you can't tell it to plug in 5 so what you need to do is once you press enter use your up arrow key to highlight your answer and press enter and then just go in there and replace the x's with fives and go ahead and press diamond to get an approximation okay you don't want to give it to them in terms of sign all right um, so the answer to part a you should write and you need to label it g prime of five is equal to negative twenty four point five eight seven remember it's always three numbers after the decimal and you just stop don't worry about rounding it. Now they would count if you if you gave them um, five eight eight, they would count that, or they will count five eight seven. Um, but if they let you if they let you uh, truncate, do it. Okay, don't don't risk messing up the rounding. Okay. Now that's just part of it. That's one point. Okay, that is one point for being able to plug that into your calculator and plug five into it. The second point, it says using correct units, interpret your answer in the context of the problem. So we need to think about this. G is the rate at which the unprocessed gravel arrives. What? Okay. Um, so G was the rate. All right. G was the rate. Um, and so G prime is how that rate is changing, okay? Because remember the derivative is, is describing the change of the function. So 
um, a description that you can use here is that the rate at which unprocessed gravel is arriving is decreasing because it's negative by 24.587 I left my 5 out tons per hour at time 5 hours. You need to put that in there because it's only at exactly 5 hours that that's the rate. If it were at any other time, it would be a different rate. Okay? So that's that's how specific you need to be in your interpretations or in your answers here. Okay. B says find the total amount of unprocessed gravel that arrives at the plant during the hours of operations on this workday. When you see total amount, that's an accumulation, you should be thinking integral. Okay, the integral is an accumulator. All right, remember the, the bicycle problem. We found out that if we graph the velocity function, the area under the curve is the distance traveled. So the same thing's gonna apply here, it's just a different context. Um, if we do the integral of the rate at which it's arriving, then we're gonna get how much was arrived, how much arrived, okay? If you take the integral of a rate, you're gonna get an amount, whether that amount is a distance, or in this case, um, the amount of gravel, it doesn't matter. So you should always set it up Okay, you should always set it up because a lot of times they give you a point just for the integral. So if you recognize that this is an integral, we're going from time equals zero to time equals eight hours. And guess what? You don't have to write out the function. You can use the function notation. You can put g of t right there, dt, and you get a point for that part right there. And then put your equal sign, and guess what? Once again, use your calculator. Do not do this by hand, okay? Go to your calculate menu, or calculus menu, uh, integral, plug in your function. Comma x, comma zero, comma eight. And it takes just a minute because it's a trig function. Okay, and then you get your answer. And you write it down. 825.551 tons. Make sure you put the units on there. Um, now this one doesn't say anything about needing the units, but it never, ever, ever hurts. And that's all you have to put for B. Okay, that is literally all you have to put for B on this calculator active. Okay, C, is the amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant increasing or decreasing at time equals five hours? Show the work that leads to your answer. Okay, so, um, it wants to know is the amount of unprocessed gravel increasing or decreasing at five hours? So we know that the plant is processing gravel at a constant rate of 100 tons per hour. Well, let's see how much is arriving at this time that they're asking for. Okay, they're asking for five hours. So let's find out, well, how much is arriving at five hours? And we're gonna compare that to how much is being processed, okay? So this is just gonna plug into G, okay? We're just plugging five into G. So we've got 90 plus 45 times the cosine of five squared over 18. And use your diamond button to get the approximation, okay? That is 
uh, zero tons per hour are arriving a hundred tons per hour is being processed so is the amount of gravel increasing or decreasing at this point decreasing because less is arriving than is being processed so it is decreasing so that's less than that so um, the amount at time t at time five excuse me at time five hours the amount of gravel is decreasing because you have to explain you can't just use that writing you can't just use those numbers there you need to explain the amount of gravel is decreasing because and there are several different ways you can process or uh, uh, you can phrase this I would say it's decreasing because more gravel is being processed Than is arriving. No, no. I, I don't think they'd be nitpicky about that. Um, arriving at the plant. And it couldn't hurt to say again at time five hours. You don't have to, but can't hurt. Okay. Um, now their exact explanation they said at time t equals 5 the rate at which unprocessed gravel is arriving is less than the rate at which it is being processed therefore the amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant is decreasing at time 5 um, so I mean pretty much you, you get a point for comparing g of 5 to 100 and you get a point for your conclusion so um, you're gonna you're gonna get a point for the second part of this explanation, and you're gonna get a point for saying that it is decreasing. Okay. Yes. Well, no. A is the rate the rate at which it's arriving is decreasing. It's not. The question asked, and I know what you mean. I know what, I know exactly what what you're thinking, um, because yes, usually increasing and decreasing, we do look at the derivative, but you have to look at what they're specifically asking about. They're asking for is the overall amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant increasing or decreasing? So you, you have two factors. You've got it coming in, and you and you have it being processed at that time. So you have to compare. Um, those two amounts at that specific time to determine increasing and decreasing. Yes, G prime is the rate at which it's arriving. It's not the rate of change of the gravel. That's just the rate of change of the arrival of the gravel. Okay. Um, D, what is the maximum amount? Okay, what should you think when you see maximum amount? A derivative. Okay. Um, is the uh, what is the maximum amount of unprocessed gravel <clears throat> at the plant during about uh, during the hours of operation on this workday? Okay, so maximum amount, like we just said, um, you should be thinking derivative. But derivative of what? Okay, um, so we're talking about gravel is coming in, gravel is being processed. We have two rates here, so. The function that we're going to be looking at, they name it A of T, which makes sense because it's talking about the amount. Okay, it's talking about the amount um, is equal to. We started with 500 tons. That's where that initial condition comes into play. We started with 500 tons plus. We've got to accumulate, right? We've got to accumulate our gravel over the time of the workday. So we've got from zero to T because it's going to change, okay? Because we're trying to find the time at which it's the greatest. We don't want to just know what. what